when you go through obstacles and um and hard times in your life nobody cares you know they they like the ultimate the the end of the movie they don't really care you know about the ins and outs and the um the hard times they just want to see the success story and um, i keep a close um relationship with my fans that's why i keep putting out so much underground content so regardless of of how much they hear me in the radio, I don't ever want to be the one that's not in the rucker. I don't ever want to be the one that ain't in the barbershop talk. You know, it's like, I want to have both. And if I can pick one, I'd rather be like, I'd rather be a god in hip hop in the streets than to be, um, you know, a big commercial pop star, you know, that that's not respected by my peer. The unit. Murders and burglars around my way Poverty society climbing up every day Honesty inside of me, proud to be what I say I stay here too long, it'll probably come my way Things don't wanna go and get clean, they want that yay Run up on my mansion, you running up on the K what up guys your boy quake and i am back with a brand new episode of what happened too but before we get into that be sure to follow me on twitter and on instagram at quake gw a link is in the description below for both with this new episode i'm deciding to focus on an artist that came out in the early 2000s i like to switch back and forth from more recent artists to older artists and this one is definitely another one that is very underrated and this artist is someone that is part of my favorite hip-hop group of all time and as you guys know that's g-unit and the artist that i'm talking about is the most lyrical one in the group and as you could tell by the video title i'm talking about lloyd banks what happened to lloyd banks now to me lloyd banks is easily one of the best rappers i've ever heard lyrically and i'm willing to put up my money if lloyd banks battled any rapper in hip-hop history ever i'm willing to bet he'll either win or it'll be a very very close match with that being said you guys know how these episodes go i talk about how they got into hip-hop highlight major points in their career and then obviously talk about what they're doing now Lloyd Banks was born on April 30th, 1982. He was originally born in New Carrollton, Maryland, but obviously ended up in Queens, New York. As Lloyd Banks grew up, he started listening to hip hop, and he says his main early influence was Big Daddy Kane, but he also listened to Rock Him and Slick Rick, and then eventually liked the newer generation at that time, which was Mob Deep, Snoop Dogg, Tupac, Biggie, so on and so forth. My earliest influence was on. Um... It ranged from Rock Kim to Slick Rick, Big Daddy Kane. It's probably like the biggest influence. And then it leaked over to like um, the newer generation with uh, Mob Deep, uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, Biggie, of course, Tupac, you know. But uh, one of my first influences was probably Big Daddy Kane. He says that when he performed for the first time at age 11 or 12, that's when he decided he wanted to become a rapper because he liked the thrill of the stage. And to build his name, he decided to battle rap people in Queens, New York. He was from 134th Guy Brewer Boulevard from Jamaica, Queens. So everybody that was in that neighborhood knew Banks as the best battle rapper. So he would go and battle rap other people in different areas. Lloyd Banks was close to Tony Yeo. They were only four years apart. So they hung out a lot. And this is how the bond between Tony Yeo and Lloyd Banks happened they both liked rapping so they both hung out and rapped with each other 50 cent came into the picture a lot later because 50 cent was about seven years older than lloyd banks and as you know a seven year age gap is a huge difference around that time when you're young and 50 was not hanging out with banks he was hanging out with tony yayo because him and yayo only had a three-year age gap Tony Yeo, though, however, would be the middleman between Lloyd Banks and 50 Cent finally meeting. As Lloyd Banks got a little bit older, Tony Yeo noticed he got better with time. So Tony Yeo introduced Lloyd Banks to 50 Cent. 50 Cent heard Lloyd Banks 
and loved the type of lyrics he was spitting. So that's when G-Unit officially formed. But before we would hear all three of them on the same track, Yayo and Banks would be releasing a lot of freestyles together. They actually appeared on the DJ Rough Hands mixtape 134 All Stars. You actually see on the cover Lloyd Banks, Tony Yayo, and even Bangham Smurf. You don't see 50 Cent on the cover at all. You just have a couple of tracks on the mixtape that were from 50, but no collabs from Yayo, Banks, and 50 at all. Then in 2001, Banks, Yayo, and 50 would end up recording a lot of music together. The first track they ever recorded all together was called Bad News. It would end up getting featured on the 50 Cent is the Future mixtape, but the first track that the public heard of all three of them together was a track called That's What's Up on the May 2002 mixtape that 50 released called Guess Who's Back. However, this almost didn't happen. Lloyd Banks on September 10th, 2001, one day before 9-11, ended up getting shot at at a club. After this, Banks, of course, decided not to go out anymore and just strictly focus on recording music with 50 and Yayo. They ended up teaming up with DJ Who Kid and started pumping out mixtapes, building their buzz. From that buzz, as we know, 50 Cent ended up signing with Shady Records under Aftermath and under Interscope, and then they granted him his own label, which was obviously G-Unit Records, and then the first two artists signed to G-Unit were Tony Yayo and Lloyd Banks, and this is when Banks officially got his major label deal, and his first major label album appearance was obviously on 50 Cent's Give It Try Trying on the track Don't Push Me, which also featured Eminem, so Banks got the best placement ever he could as a new artist, he ended up getting on a track with 50 Cent, who was huge at the time, and Eminem, and held his own weight. From that, Banks did not waste no time and decided to release his debut mixtape, Money in the Bank, in the summer of 2003. This would be the first official Lloyd Banks mixtape where Lloyd Banks was the lead artist. Banks didn't let up, however. He then followed that Money in the Bank mixtape with a newer mixtape on September 20th, 2003 called Mo Money in the Bank. And this mixtape was just another way for Banks to solidify himself as a solo artist as he was gearing up for the G-Unit debut album. The G-Unit debut album was released on November 14th, 2003, titled Beg for Mercy, and it did very well, selling 380,000 copies within the first week and debuted at number three on the Billboard 200. However, there were three artists on this G-Unit debut album. It was 50 Cent, Young Buck, and Lloyd Banks. Tony Yeo was still in prison, and the game had not been inserted into the group yet. So Banks, of course, got the shine on this album. It was very clear on this album that Banks was the most lyrical one in the group. And mind you, Lloyd Banks was the youngest one in the group as well. So for him to be so lyrically above 50 Cent and Young Buck, it definitely caught people's attention. The album was a great lead way to Lloyd Banks' debut album because the fourth single that was released off of Beg for Mercy was a track called Smile. And as we know, this was mainly a Lloyd Banks track. It was released on April 8th, 2004. And in that same month, Lloyd Banks released his first single off his new debut album, and the single was called On Fire. And this single did very well for Lloyd Banks. It peaked at number eight on the Billboard Hot 100, and this was the first time a G-Unit solo artist did this. Because you have to remember 50 Cent was signed to Eminem's label and not his own label. So Lloyd Banks was now the first artist presented from G-Unit officially and was doing very well. Then Lloyd Banks finally released his debut album, The Hunger For More, on June 29th, 2004, and it skyrocketed to number one on the Billboard 200 and sold 433,000 copies within the first week, almost half a million first week, and this is only off of one single that was released to promote the album. According to RIAA certifications, it says the album has only gone platinum, but the certification date was on September 9th, 2004, which was a long time ago. A lot of people speculate that this album has now sold well over 3 million copies. After the album came out, they kept promoting the album by releasing new singles and shooting videos for them. The second single was I'm So Fly, which was released on July 13th, 2004. This track did not chart on the Billboard Hot 100 at all, but it did perform well in the streets. The reception was very good. Then they chose Karma as the third single off the album on October 19, 2004. 
The single did very well because it was more of a female-driven record. It peaked at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100, which was way better than what I'm So Fly did. With the success of his debut album, he also managed to release part three of Mo Money in the Bank mixtape series called Cashing In on September 19th, 2004. Also in 2004, he got the title for Mixtape Artist of the Year. So one of the strong points, I heard that you were Mixtape Artist yeah. of the Year. Actually, 2002, uh, 51 best artists on mixtape. Uh -huh. And um, when I saw that plaque, I was like, man, you know, I wanted to get one. You know, so I set my goal to get it the next year because I had a solo album coming out in 2004. Achieve that goal. That plaque is like my most important plaque because the people gave that to me. You know, um, it's not like any big award show and you know you got a bunch of fat guys with suits on behind the desk who really never even heard your album and, and taking it. So this was given to me by the people, so it was definitely appreciated. After his huge success in 2004, of course, Lloyd Banks had to take a step back because there were other artists on G-Unit Records. Because of not being in album cycle mode, he did not release a single solo project in 2005, but he was featured on 50 Cent's The Massacre album, Tony Yeo's album, and even did a couple features for other artists. He appeared on Busta Rhymes' Touch It remix that year, and he appeared on Daddy Yankee's Rumpa remix with the Unbuck that year. He also appeared on the G-Unit First Lady artist Olivia single twisted then 2006 came and this is when banks was getting back into the cycle of releasing an album he was prepping up to release his sophomore album but there was a huge fork in the road banks had started recording his sophomore album in 2005 he initially called it the big withdrawal but this album ended up leaking online on the internet and how this happened was banks was sleeping with a couple of women he accidentally left his cd in the room with them they took the cd and ended up leaking it online so he essentially lost a whole album of work that album is still available online right now for download go ahead and check it out it is called the big withdraw the album is amazing the concept of the album the whole project is very good and now we will never know what that could have been because of those females leaking that album. Regardless, Lloyd Banks is a monster in the studio, so he had a bunch of tracks stacked up and was already gearing up to release an album in 2006. To build up his buzz, he decided to release a new mixtape on May 27, 2006 called Gang Green Season Starts Now. Gang Green was initially supposed to be Lloyd Banks' own record label apart from G-Unit. However, as we know now, it never ended up panning out for him, and we don't know the details as to why. Lloyd Banks then, after having that album leaked and releasing his mixtape to build up his buzz, on September 3rd, 2006, he released the first single called Hands Up featuring 50 Cent. The single was produced by Eminem as well, so it had a great backing to it, but the single did not perform as well as his previous first single off his debut album did. The single ended up peaking at number 84 on the Billboard Hot 100. It did well on the Hot Rap Songs chart, it peaked at number 15, and the Hot R&B and Hip Hop songs, it peaked at number 30. So streetwise, it was doing very good, but commercial-wise, like they had hoped, it did not perform that well. Banks also pushed the street record with 50 Cent called Cake. The music video was shot, 50 never appeared in the music video. Then on October 10th, 2006, Lloyd Banks dropped his sophomore album, Rotten Apple. The album debuted at number three with 143,000 copies sold within the first week. And as of January 2017, the album has sold over 600,000 copies, which means it's gone gold. After the album's release and its poor performance to what Banks was used to and to what g -Unit Records as a standard was used to, they tried to keep promoting the album by releasing more singles. The third single was called Help, featuring Carrie Hilson. And this song did not chart on the Billboard Hot 100 at all, but it did peak at number 77 on the hot hip hop and R&B charts, which sucks because it's an amazing track. I don't know how it got so underrated. I don't know if Interscope dropped the ball on promoting the single, but this song should have easily been a top 10 hit. Everyone that I know that has listened to it has always had it on repeat and has always said it's very underrated. Following the album, he decided to release another mixtape. This would be the final chapter for the Money in the Bank series. 
It was called Gangrene Season Continues. It was released on December 18th, 2006. In that same year, he appeared on Eminem's single, You Don't Know, featuring 50 and Cashes. He also appeared on Eminem's mixtape, The Rio. In 2007, no music was released from Lloyd Banks as a solo artist. Then in 2008, he was gearing up to be featured on the next G-Unit album, which was called Terminate On Sight. But before that dropped, two mixtapes came from G-Unit. The first one being on February 12, 2008 called Return of the Body Snatchers. The second being Elephant in the Sand on March 11, 2008. Then on July 1, 2008, the second G-Unit album, Terminator on Sight, came out. It debuted at number 4 on the Billboard 200 and it sold 102,000 copies within the first week. And if you compare this to the first June album, clearly this is way lower. And this is when the problem between Lloyd Banks and his record label, Interscope Records, who was the major record label behind G-Unit, had issues. After the poor performance of his sophomore album, Rotten Apple, and the poor performance of the second G-Unit group album, Lloyd Banks and Tony Ayo were both dropped from Interscope Records. Despite being dropped from Interscope, that did not stop Lloyd Banks from continually making music and dropping music. In that same year of 2008, he dropped his new mixtape, Return of the PLK, on September 26, 2008. Then, just a month later, he dropped Halloween Havoc on October 31st. So, two mixtapes back-to-back within a month. Then, 2009 came, and Banks did not slow down one bit. Right when 2009 hit, on January 1st, he dropped his new mixtape, The Cold Corner. Then, 50 Cent ended up beefing with Rick Ross, and Lloyd Banks eventually ended up jumping in, and he released a song called Officer Down, and in my opinion, this is easily one of the best diss tracks I have ever heard. It is a very, very underrated diss track, and if this song was highlighted more during the 50 vs. Ross beef, Rick Ross would have clearly lost because this track just obliterated him. Rick Ross, after this, did not say anything bad about Lloyd Banks at all. Ross proceeded to ignore the diss track and just go at Banks for getting dropped by Interscope. And usually when an artist ignores your diss track and decides to go at you on other things, they know they clearly lost or they can't go at you one-on-one -on -one in a lyrical battle. This is why I said earlier in the video, I'm willing to put Lloyd Banks up against anyone lyrically and I'm willing to bet that Lloyd Banks will beat them. And that Officer Down diss track is an example as to why I say that. It sucks how underrated that track is and how most people don't mention it as a great diss track. I feel like it's one of the best, even top five for me. Following that, on his birthday, he released another mixtape called Happy Birthday on April 30th, 2009. And in the same year, once again, he dropped another mixtape called The V5 on December 28th, 2009. And on this mixtape, my favorite track is Rather Be Me. Go ahead and check that one out. That's probably one of my favorite mixtapes from Banks' mixtape catalog. Despite him releasing five mixtapes within two years, it didn't really do much to increase his buzz. So most people thought Lloyd Banks fell off and that he's independent and not making any noise anymore. However, when 2010 came around, Lloyd Banks would prove all the doubters wrong. And on February 9, 2010, he dropped a new song called Beamer Benzer Bentley featuring Joel Santana. When this track was released, it wasn't noted that it was the first single off his upcoming album. It got released, Banks was on tour while it was released, and when he came back, he noticed that there was a huge buzz for the song, and a lot of radio stations were picking up the song and spinning it. Then the song ended up getting on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and ended up peaking at number 49, which was way higher than what his previous album lead single had done. So now Banks was back on the forefront of hip-hop while being independent with no label pushing the song to help him. Because of the success, Lloyd Banks was essentially the flag carrier for G Unit in 2010. 50 had stopped focusing on music and was doing other things. Yayo hadn't released a project in years, so Banks was the one that was the forefront for the label and was delivering great music at this time. The single also ended up going gold on September 2nd, 2010, which means it sold over 500,000 singles, and this was amazing for someone who was independent with no label behind him. So, of course, with that success, Success, all the labels came back asking Banks to sign with them. Def Jam Records ended up asking Banks to sign with them. Interscope even came back and asked to sign with them after dropping him previously. But ultimately, Lloyd Banks ended up staying with Junit Records and signing a distribution deal with EMI. I thought when I got dropped, I was like, 
you know what, obviously they out their mind, you know what I'm saying, but it's cool. Um, and they overlooked me because they, you know, whatever reason they wanted to go in and change the direction or what have you, I played possum, you know. Um, all along I had over 100 records recorded, which turned into those five mixtapes, which turned into the momentum for Beam of Benz, to the point where when Beam of Benz and Benny came out, people thought I was still on Interscope Records. That's why Interscope was reaching to try to pick the record up, so they can just attach it on to that, because we did that. In no reality, Beam of Benz was recorded in my home, mix and mastered out the pocket, straight to iTunes, you know, and, and over 600,000 units sold, independent, helped fund the project. So with that, he drops his second single called Any Girl on June 8, 2010, featuring Lloyd. This song did not perform as good as his first single, but it did end up peaking at number 52 on the Billboard Hot R&B and Hip Hop songs. Banks announced that his next album, HFM2, would be coming out on November 22, 2010. And on this date, he would be going up against Nicki Minaj, who would be releasing her debut album, Pink Friday, and Kanye West, who would be releasing his new album, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. So Kanye West ended up tweeting on Twitter, Yo man, Lloyd Banks, probably the most underrated MC in the game. Man, he deserves to be top five at least. And I'm thankful that Kanye West said this because he is one of the most underrated MCs in hip hop, period. And of course, Banks appreciated this as well as 50 Cent. So Banks is my favorite you know. rapper. And he Kanye West's favorite rapper. Top five dead all up. You heard? And from that tweet came a collab with Lloyd Banks and Kanye West for the first time ever. And this song served as the third single off his album. The song was called Started Up. It featured Kanye West, Fabulous, Swiss Beats, and Ryan Leslie. It was released as a single on November 2nd, 2010. And it charted at number 52 on the Billboard Hot R&B and Hip Hop songs. And this is a track that I felt was underrated as well because it should have charted on the Hot 100. And I'm surprised that they never shot a music video for this song. I'm sure the reason why they never did was because it was probably hard to get all those artists in one spot. You know, because everybody had their own schedules. Then on November 22nd, 2010, his album was finally released. And it debuted at number 26 on the Billboard 200, which is very low. It had 49,000 copies sold within the first week. However, EMI, the distribution label, made it clear that they undershipped the album. It was sold out in a lot of retailers. It was very hard to find the album. Regardless of the sales of the album, the review for the album was still amazing. A lot of people liked it and felt like Banks was on top of his game. And I couldn't agree more. Everything on this album was lyrically top notch. You can tell Banks improved a lot. And based off the upcoming projects, you can tell Banks was getting better and better and better. Transitioning into late 2011, and Lloyd Banks dropped a new mixtape called The Cold Corner 2. And this mixtape could have easily been his next album. I would have paid for this if he would have dropped it on iTunes for purchase 110%. A lot of these tracks on this mixtape could have easily passed as a single for his upcoming album. The mixtape is just essentially flawless. I think it's his best mixtape to date. With tracks like 123 Grind with Prodigy, Shock the World, Make It Stack with ASAP Rocky. That could have easily been a single. Score, We Fucking, and No Love. All these tracks are my favorite on this mixtape. And this mixtape is very, very underrated. It can easily pass as one of the best mixtapes of this decade. And I'm very surprised that it wasn't promoted more and pushed at as more of an album, as well as having music videos shot for tracks off this project. I felt like if that would have happened, a lot of these songs would have actually ended up getting charted on the Billboard Hot 100 and more people would have paid attention to Lloyd Banks' mixtapes. So check out those tracks I listed off. If you're not familiar with Lloyd Banks' music, this is definitely a project that you should check out from his mixtape catalog. Then the following year, in 2012, he did not stop and released another mixtape on July 24th, which was called V6 The Gift. This is another mixtape that was very underrated and featured a lot of very great tracks that were original that could have been pushed as, as a single off his upcoming album, but they were released to us for free and a lot of people slept on this mixtape as well. There were a lot of great tracks like The Sprint, We Run The Town featuring Votto, 
Protocol, Can She Live, Bring It Back, Featuring Fabulous, Getting By with Schoolboy Q, Money Don't Matter, Show and Prove, so on and so forth. All those tracks I mentioned, go ahead and check out off this mixtape. And this is another project that I felt Banks could have sold, and I felt like he should have shot some music videos for these tracks. It would have better helped promote his upcoming projects. That's what nowadays rappers are doing. They're using mixtapes as essentially albums, shooting videos for them. And then when they quote unquote release their official album, they then promote it a little more heavy. But people get used to the artist being in front of the camera and being more in the limelight when they shoot videos for mixtapes. And this is something that Banks lacked a lot. And 50 even mentioned this in various interviews. I had to go get him. He just put out a tape, a tape with 18 cuts, 19 cuts on it. And there's no music videos. If you know now, the music video is visual. Yeah, it's like all you, you got. You gotta, um, immediately after people hear the song on the air, they go to the telephone because that's the device right, right next to them, to, mm -hmm. to YouTube. They don't even download the song like that. Mm -hmm. They just go get the video. Or they go to YouTube and look and listen to it again to see if they really like it because they're heard, right. hearing it the second or third time right there on their phone. Then in 2013, he dropped another project. This time, he created a new mixtape series called All or Nothing. This one was Volume 1. It featured Failure's No Option as the subtitle. And this was another mixtape that I felt could have been pushed as, as an album. And the two favorite tracks off this mixtape for me are House Pride and Failure's No Option. Then in 2014, Banks shifted his focus back onto G-Unit because in 2014, G-Unit had a reunion and they decided to release a bunch of freestyles and then they decided to release two new EPs. After taking a break in 2014 of releasing a solo project, in 2015, Banks continued releasing new mixtapes and on November 1st, 2015, he dropped the second installment to Halloween Havoc. However, before this, Lloyd Banks performed at BB King's in New York in early August of 2015 and had promised fans that he was going to release the third installment to his Cold Corner series. Check this out. What's up, bro? How many of y'all fuck with the Cold Corner? Y'all waiting on part three, right? This what I'm gonna do. I'm thinking about releasing it and when I do, you will pay for it, and it will be pre-orders out there, and if I'm not satisfied with the number I get back, it just won't come out. It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. I'm so frustrated with hip-hop right now. Unfortunately, that never happened. This is when Banks was voicing his frustration with the music industry and with fans in general. When Banks released Halloween Havoc 2, he also decided to shoot two music videos for two tracks off the project, which he hasn't done in a while since releasing mixtapes. The two tracks were Angel Dust and Mind Over Matter, and both of these tracks were easily my favorite off the project. Tell them about the exit, my next turns and drop for leverage, feelings hanging, built and stain a lot of claim and not connected. Going into 2016, this would be the last time as of now that we would receive a full Lloyd Banks project. In September 25th, 2016, he dropped the series volume 2 All or Nothing, Live It Up mixtape, and then just a month later on October 31st, 2016, he dropped the third installment of Halloween Havoc called Four Days of Fury. In this same year, this is when Banks and 50 Cent started having issues, and of course Banks is signed to 50, so when they start having issues, the music also suffers. Regardless, Lloyd Banks decided at the end of 2016 to revamp his Blue Friday series that he started in 2010 to promote his upcoming album, HFM2, but it only lasted for about 10 tracks. Also in late 2016, Banks became a father for the first time ever, introducing his newborn daughter to the world. Then in 2017, he didn't release a mixtape at all, but towards the end of 2017, he created a new series called At Your Request. And what this series was, was that fans could submit to Banks what beats they wanted him to rap over. This series, though, didn't continue on for too long. He only released six tracks from this series and then ended it abruptly. I don't know why he ended it. Maybe he was voicing his frustration with the views because if you look at the views on these songs, on a lot of the songs he releases, 
they're very low and it's very disgusting how low they are which shows how underrated he is and I'm sure that's frustrating for an artist who does their craft at a top tier. Transitioning into 2018, Lloyd Banks and 50 Cent would have more problems. 50 Cent in June of 2018 announced that Lloyd Banks was officially off G-Unit Records. Earlier in that year, in March of 2018, Lloyd Banks would announce that he's retiring from music. He got on Twitter and said, I fell in love with hip hop over 25 years ago. It was that thing I turned to during good times and bad. Just want to say thank you to the artists before me that inspired me and send my appreciation to everyone that supported me till this day. Thank you. With that being said, I think it's time to lay it down. And the media covered this story like crazy, announcing that Banks has retired. But Lloyd Banks, just a couple hours later in that same day, decided to announce that he is not retiring. He tweeted, just goes to show you what a mess the industry has become. They'll rather cover everything that happens around the music than the actual music itself. I hope all these outlets support me when I drop. Have a good day. So clearly he was frustrated with the way the industry was focusing on other things besides his actual music. He was frustrated with the numbers that his music was producing, and that's totally understandable. Fast forward to now in 2019, and Banks hasn't really released any new music for fans. He ended up performing the 15-year anniversary for his debut album, The Hunger for More, on July 6th, and it was a huge success. A lot of people showed up. I wish I could have made it there because that would have been something great to experience. However, 50 never ended up showing up at the concert even though he was featured on the album heavily and the reason why was on that same week 50 voiced his frustration with G-Unit members Young Buck, Tony Yeo, and Lloyd Banks. He says, do you realize G-Unit only did five shows together without me? In 16 years, every time you saw them together, it was my show. Now that's a big bag they fucked up. They fucked up the whole package. So based on that, we assume that 50 and Banks are not on speaking terms. Just recently though, Lloyd Banks and Tony Ayo announced that they're going to Australia for a September 2019 tour, which is dope because it shows that Lloyd Banks still wants to be in the mix of things. There's a lot of factors as to why he hasn't released new music. The first would obviously be he's frustrated with the music industry. When you drop very, very good music at a top tier in terms of lyrics, in terms of beat production, all that mix and mastering everything and it doesn't get the recognition that it deserves that's very frustrating the best way to put this is if you were at a job and you were working there for 10 plus years and you did everything perfectly at the best level that you could do it and then one person randomly comes in and works there for about a year and gets a promotion over you how would you feel would you have the same enthusiasm to do that job you probably want it you'd be very frustrated and that's how i feel like lloyd banks is looking at it he's a very very talented artist but he's not getting the support that he definitely deserves if he drops a new freestyle it only gets about 250,000 views within a year which is ridiculous he should be doing at least half a million to a million within a year or more even if it's a freestyle if it's a single whatever the case may be he definitely deserves more recognition so that's the first reason as to why he's probably not releasing music the second would be he said it in various interviews that he dedicated his 20s his whole 20s to his career and that when he gets in his 30s he wants to relax and enjoy the time that he has with his family and friends and he doesn't want to constantly be in the spotlight which is understandable because he is a human being let's remember this these people might be public figures but they don't owe anyone anything they made this music they gave it to us we enjoyed it they don't have to constantly be doing this if they don't want to i see a lot of people say that lloyd banks is lazy they diminish his work ethic when he's released multiple free mixtapes for us sometimes three to four mixtapes in a year so he can definitely take out time for himself i mean if i dedicated my whole 20s to my craft which i'm constantly doing right now i would definitely want to take some time out in my 30s to relax plus he's a father now with two kids so i don't blame him for wanting to spend time with his kids before they grow up very quickly because that time flies i'm probably probably but i've been doing this for over a decade putting i put my i ain't even got a girl i don't got no kids no girl never had one nothing because of my music I mm -hmm. gave my 20s to my friends and my family and my fans. 
You know what I'm saying? Spec. So now it's like I got to do what makes me happy as a man. The third thing I would say as to why he hasn't really released music and hasn't been focused on it was because of G-Unit internal problems. There's a lot of problems between 50 and Banks, and that needs to be hashed out because fans obviously want Banks and 50 music, and everyone wants G-Unit reunited, constantly making music and delivering us classics like they did when they first formed in 2002. That was the best. That when we were getting album after album, year after year, and great music and just great energy from them, that was when they were making their best content, and I wish it would go back to that, but things change. So that's it for this episode of What Happened To. I hope you guys enjoyed it. What do you guys think about Lloyd Banks' music? Are you guys fans? Or are you guys not aware of it? Like I said earlier in the video, I think if you're new to Lloyd Banks and his music, I would go check out Cold Corner 2 Mixtape, and honestly, all of his albums to me are amazing from HFM to Rotten Apple to HFM2. They're all great projects to check out. I hope Lloyd Banks eventually decides to drop an album. I will be supporting it if it does ever come out. If he does decide to release Cold Corner 3, I will pre-order it, no problem. If he does decide to drop a new project, will you guys pre-order it and buy it and actually support it? Let me know in the comments below. With that being said, if you want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com backslash diverse mentality for just a dollar a month or more. You can help support this channel further. A link is in the description below. Like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe. I do videos like this daily on hip hop news and much more. So definitely subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at QuakeGW. Like us on Facebook, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.